pounds and they can hold their breath for about eight minutes at a time. But over on the left hand side up on top of the island you are seeing some pink backed pelican. The pink backed pelican get their name because during the mating season the skin under their feathers turns a slight pink. And there's a couple more hippos as you can see walking across the bottom. And it looks like we're going to get another look at a couple hippos up on land over on the left hand side. Now don't be fooled by their size my friends, those hippos can get up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour on land. And over on the left hand side we also have some Nile Crocodile. The Nile Crocodile have a bite force of about 2,000 pounds and they are going to get about as long as a giraffe is tall. That is 16 feet. But they are also excellent parents. Like any good parents, those crocodiles will roll their eggs around in their mouth to encourage the young ones to hatch faster. But we are going to say see you later alligator to those Nile Crocodile and we're going to head down towards the savannah. The savannah is home to some of the more iconic animals that we can hope to find here on the reserve today. So my friends, twin day, let's go. Now up ahead on the right hand side marking our entrance into the savanna is the baobab tree. This funny looking tree is sometimes known as the upside down tree. It is going to remain leafless about nine months out of the year to conserve water, making it look like the roots are on the top. It can also be known as the tree of life. Some animals are going to tear the bark off the trunk of that tree to try to get the water that's stored inside. But there are four more baobab trees down here on the reserve, so see if you can find them all. Over on the right hand side, of course, we are seeing some Maasai giraffe over there. We can tell that those are Maasai giraffe because of the rough irregular patterns they have on their coats. Those giraffe do have the same amount of vertebrae in their neck as we do, that is seven. And they have the same joints in their neck that we have in our shoulders. It's crazy. I did. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Again, for reference, those giraffes, that's about as tall as a Nile crocodile is long. Wow. And over there on the left, up on top of the den, those are some African wild dogs. Now, the African wild dogs might look cute and cuddly, but they are the most successful predators you can find on the savanna. They have about a 90% successful hunting rate. And they will often chase their prey to exhaustion in packs. Of course, they're also some of the only pack hunters that will call off a hunt if one of their members gets injured. And they're also known as the painted dogs because of those beautiful fur coats. They look cute though. And over on the left in the clearing, those antelope over there are sable antelope, and they are very brave. They're some of the only antelopes that will stand up to a lion and win. And these giraffe are some of the most big-hearted animals we have here on the reserve. Of course, I do mean that literally, though. Giraffe hearts are about 25 pounds and about the size of a basketball. And they will spend about 20 hours of their day eating. The giraffes are only going to rest or sleep for about 30 minutes in a day. And of course, a group of giraffe is known as a tower of giraffe. Mama, look at the baby giraffe. A baby giraffe is born at about six feet tall, but you can imagine it is a little jarring. The first thing those babies experience is about an eight foot drop to the ground. <laughs> Over on the right hand side, over on the hill, you are seeing some white bearded wildebeests over there. The wildebeests make up some of the largest herds you can find on the savannah. Their herds are so large, in fact, that sometimes you can see them from space. They have the longest migration pattern of any of the animals here on the savannah. And the name wildebeest comes from the language Afrikaans, meaning wild beast. <laughs> I, I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. And of 
course, over on the right-hand side, closer to us, are the Ancoli cattle, also known as Watusi cattle. They have those extra large horns that are about three to four feet long each, but they are honeycomb on the inside like a beehive, meaning those Ancoli cattle are actually very lightweight and they help to keep the animal cool. Oh, there's another upside-down tree. <laughs> and over on the right-hand side, of course, we also have some Hartman's Mountain Zebra. The Hartman's Mountain Zebra have a small flap of skin on the bottom of their neck known as a dewlap. That dewlap helps to keep them cool in the hot savanna sun. Much like you and I have unique fingerprints, those zebras all have unique striping patterns. So no two zebras are ever going to look quite the same. And of course a group of zebras. Of course elephant territory is also marked by Monkey Point. So be on the lookout for the monkeys up ahead as well. Oh. On the right hand side, of course, that is an African elephant. You'll notice that elephant is flapping their ears a bit. When it's hot outside, those elephants will flap their ears to cool themselves down. They have a lot of blood that runs through their ears. By flapping them, they can actually cool their entire body down an extra 15 degrees. And over on the left, those are some mandrels over there. Mandrels are the largest monkeys you can find. Males are about 100 pounds and females are about 35 pounds. And mandrels are some of the only monkeys that will smile at each other. They will actually bare their teeth at one another in friendship. But they only smile at other mandrels. If they smile at you, I would start running. <laughs> Now elephants like to live in yards like the ones over on the right hand side with a lot of dirt and dust. That's because elephants have very sensitive skin so you'll often see them throwing that dirt and dust up on their backs to protect themselves from the sun. Elephants also have the second longest childhood of any mammal, second of course only to us as humans. Elephants don't reach full adulthood until about 13 to 15 years old, and those female elephants will be pregnant for close to two years. When the males reach full adulthood, they will usually leave the herd. They prefer to live solitary lives, meaning they'd like to live alone. So elephant herds will be led by the most dominant female, known as the matriarch. But my friends, it does appear that we are entering some red clay pits here. Red clay pits are very important for the elephants. They will eat the red clay from time to time as a source of sodium and other minerals. It looks like over on the right hand side, some elephants have just recently rubbed their tusks up against the red clay. Hopefully we're not too far behind. Those red clay pits though, my friends, unfortunately are disappearing. We as humans are mining the red clay pits for a mineral called coltan. Coltan is what's used in rechargeable batteries, such as the ones in cell phones. So next time you get a new phone, maybe consider recycling your old phone so we can keep those red clay pits around for the African elephants. Unfortunately, elephants are also being poached for their ivory tusks and are being sold illegally. But we are doing everything that we can to protect the elephants here on the reserve. Now over on the left hand side, there are quite a few fallen trees over there. That's no accident. Elephants are going to run into the trees from time to time to knock them over. It's just a way for elephants to eat from the trees a little bit easier. After all, who likes to reach very far for their food? And of course, elephants can hold up to five gallons of water in their trunk at one time. So they do have the full meal down here on the savannah. And there's a couple more elephants over on the left. And over on the left we also have some greater flamingos. These are greater flamingos because they are the tallest of the flamingo species at about five feet tall, but they are also the lightest pink. 
that's because those flamingos are born gray, but over time, as they eat their diet of brine shrimp, the gray feathers will begin to turn to pink color that you're used to, though it does take about two years for that pink color to set in. And if you take a look at the island they're standing on, that is the largest hidden Mickey you can find at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And of course, a group of flamingos are known as a flamboyance of flamingos. Something we learned here at the Harambe Wildlife Reserve along with the Disney Wildlife Conservation Fund is that elephants are actually afraid of bees. So we helped some farmers build beehives around their farms. They were having the sun so they can see their prey a little bit easier. Of course, cheetahs can run at an average top speed of about 60 miles per hour, but they are sprinters. They can only do so for a few hundred yards before they're going to have to slow down. Of course, the fastest cheetah ever recorded was at about 73 miles per hour. And cheetahs are some of the only big cats that can purr. But over on the left-hand side, these are water buck. Water buck get their name because they drink an abnormal amount of water out here on the savanna, and they do not migrate. Those water buck will instead prefer to stick near a water source for most of their lives. Over on the left-hand side here, these are a formation of kopi rocks, and kopi rocks are very important for predators such as lions out here on the savanna. Though the lions do rest and sleep about 16 to 20 hours in a day, they are usually going to come out at night to hunt, but it will be the females doing the hunting. Males are going to hang back and protect the pride as well as their cubs. Oh, sleep. Look at the bones, Diana. Oh, it's so good. Over on the right, up uh, against the tree line there, you'll also see a small antelope known as a bontabak. The bontabak, unfortunately, is ver- For lion, of course, is Simba. Simba. They do have to eat about 8,000 calories in a day. They have a tongue that's about as rough as sandpaper, though it helps to get the meat off of the bones of their prey. And there's that male lion with that long, shaggy mane. That mane weighs about 40 pounds. And up ahead here on the left hand side I am seeing some burrows and where there are burrows there are warthogs. <clears throat> warthogs can use their tusks to dig the burrows that you're seeing down there but they are a little lazy. They don't like to dig their own burrows, they will instead prefer to steal burrows that have been dug by other animals. They will back into those burrows with their tusks facing out as a sort of natural defense. And I mentioned Simba in Swahili means lion but Pumba means foolish one. And over on the right hand side, these are a few white rhinos. <laughs> the white rhinos weigh in at about 5,000 pounds. They can run about 35 miles per hour. This particular white rhino right here on the right hand side is the baby one year old white rhino. Mama, did you see that huge one They don't have very good eyesight. They can only see about three feet in front of them, but they do have excellent hearing. A group of white rhinos is, of course, known as a crash. <laughs> and over on the right, we're also seeing some ostriches, as well as those ostrich eggs in the grass. Ostriches are the largest bird you can find on the savanna. They are flightless, meaning they can't fly, but they will use their wings to change direction while running. An ostrich can run up to about 45 miles per hour. And those eggs down there are each about three pounds, and the average adult human man can stand on one of those eggs without breaking them. Are you paying off food? It's perfect jump chat I know, this is like. Oh, this is perfect. She said more come out in the afternoon. Oh, we've crossed over here into Magadi Glen, my friends. Magadi Glen is where the warden has their post, and the warden also takes care of their Nigerian dwarf goats here on the post. Now, the Nigerian dwarf goats are very playful. They are going to play not just for fun, but also to mature physically, as well as determine who will be the most dominant member of the group. The warden sells the goat's milk to the locals. It helps the locals to rely less on the other more endangered animals we have on the reserve. 
The goat's milk is very nutritious and a good substitute, of course, so everyone wins. But my friends, the warden's post does mark the edge of the reserve, so we are going to be heading back. And my friends, I do hope that you had a wonderful safari and saw all of your favorite animals out there. I would ask when you get home, do tell your friends and family about some of the animals you saw today. A lot of them are endangered and they do need your help. Help starts by raising awareness about the animals, but if you would like to take the next step, I would encourage you to check out the Disney Wildlife Conservation Fund. You can head over to any shop here today at Disney's Animal Kingdom and round up your purchase to the next dollar. Disney will match your donation and it does help us to continue our operations here in Harambe as well as help other animals around the world. We do hope that one day these endangered animals will once again flourish in the wild. But until then, my friends, no amount of help is too small and change does begin with you. So go out there and make a difference for these animals, my friends. They are counting on you. But this is far from the only wildlife experience you can have today, my friends. I would also highly encourage you to check out the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, where you can see western lowland yeah. gorillas, meerkats, Samoro copy, zebra, a lot like of other animals over there. You can also head over to Asia and check out the Maharaja Jungle Trek, where you can see animals such as tigers, Komodo dragons.